taking me, he wrote ready on my card before he <laughs> sent me. So That's I'm what ready, he said? yeah. He was ready on your card. All right, man, we got Anaya Love Note in the building. Um, first and foremost, uh, thank you for coming. Um, we, we've been trying to do this for how long now? Oh, now he asked me a question. I asked him. <laughs> you were smoking before this? Yes, I was. I am not going <laughs> to lie to you. What? Um, it's been a minute. So I'm going to say some months. I really want to say since last year. I swear I want to go all the way back. Like if I go on my DMs and look, scroll back, I feel like it's going to say like 2021. I feel like it's probably been maybe six months, maybe. See, I was taking it all the way back to 2021, but we can go there. Well, too. well, I mean, well, six months is 2022, but so it'll be more than six months. So I've probably been like, shit, maybe almost a year. I'm just going to go with what I said the first time. 2021, but I'm trying to figure out what month in 2021. We got to paint the picture. Oh, for the see, people. you ain't ask all that. That's a lot of thought process. Didn't you just ask me if I was high? Like, what are we? Uh, so you should have came here high then. You knew we was going to have a conversation. I ain't smoked that much for me not to be hot. For being be that high, I don't do that. Okay. So I'm thinking, let's just say for sake of uh, conversation, a year. Okay, let's go for a year. That says a lot about my consistency because I've been here. Like the minimum would be like six, seven months. Yeah, minimum. Let's say seven, eight months because you said 2021. We okay. can agree to that? Yeah, we can agree you, to that. You say you're big on astrology. What's your sign? I'm a Capricorn. What, tell me about Capricorns. I don't know nothing about Capricorns. Um, well. Well, I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for me. Don't worry about my legs dangling because I'm I too short I'm not for even looking thing. at your legs. I'm trying to make sure your audio is good. People can hear you. See, look. Oh, okay. Because, you know, my, I'm short, so my, my legs be dangling no, underneath you, the table. Don't you, worry about that. You fine. You perfect. Relax. Oh, okay. With no makeup on and everything. Ooh. Now nah, you want to give me? Ooh. I'm going to tell him by himself when we get off this line. Tell me about my, You don't have to. Tell me about myself so the people can know. What, what, tell me. Let me tell y'all, son. Tell them. I told this man I ain't want to wear no makeup today. And I was like, you know what? You the first person I ever did interview with and wear no makeup. Mm. And he going to tell me and make him feel like I don't take him serious. Disrespect. And I was like, you darn right it is. So. And then I was like, oh, I didn't wear no makeup because I'm growing into myself, loving what I look like without no makeup on. And quite frankly, I think I am even better without it. And for those of you who do not like it, kiss my mama's ass. Cause she made me. Your mama's ass. Yeah, cause she made me. Okay. So, <laughs> so let me. Can, can I? Can I clear the record if you don't mind? Go I ahead. Like go ahead. If you if you would just to paint that picture, and <laughs> leave it there. People would be like, oh wow, like he's don't like got girls without makeup. No, that's not I what I'm saying. I don't think that at all. I think you're perfect how you are. Oh. But what I will say is, if you wore makeup in every interview and you decided not to wear makeup in mine, I would assume that you ain't take me as serious because I'm a. I equate makeup with sometimes. Um, I don't know, you taking your, I don't know, being serious. You want to be done up, I guess. Do you hear how you sound? So makeup sounds... means that I take myself serious? No, but that's what I equate Or does with it just enhance the confidence in a woman? It enhances it for sure, but I just know when girls get ready, I see them putting makeup on. I see on Alicia Keys do interviews all the time without no makeup on. I see Beyonce do interviews without no makeup on. I see a lot of these big celebrity women out here who's confident, who's boss women, who wears no makeup. That's true. So just because I show up to a workplace in my natural form does not mean that I don't take you serious. If anything, it means that I'm a confident woman who takes myself serious enough to walk in here with no makeup on. You should have thought about it like keep that. Keep that thought. Keep that thought. Hold up. Because I'm not going to let me go all like that. Hold up. Oh. <laughs> Hold up. Because you're not about to be. You met your match, sir. Whatever. Welcome to a nice love note world. It's yeah. my interview now. You was gonna pop up in one of these little thing in Majigma yeah. Babas. You yeah. know I'm sponsored by Bel Air. So we both we both are. So what yes, I was, that's where we met. Yes. So back to that now, nah, because you ain't about to just nah nah. You ain't about to just. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. Yes, you are right, and I think it's great that you said I want to do this no makeup thing. I think that's great. I think more women should do it because honestly. A lot of women are beautiful without makeup, and the makeup sometimes it get cakey. And, and to be real, it's just like I need to know what's underneath there. I need to know who you are, right? Mm -hmm. So, but again, I'm not about to lie. I ain't scared of you. I ain't scared of them. And I'm not gonna lie. I know when a lot of times girls get ready or they're getting ready, they're putting their makeup on because they want to make sure they impress somebody. So when you tell me that you always wore makeup in all of your interviews and you decided not to wear makeup with me, mm -hmm. I'm looking at it as, oh wow, 
you don't care that much about me to, to wear makeup. Not as okay, she just want to be, you know, natural and, and and love herself and be confident. Well, then maybe you should ask questions and not assume. Whatever. <laughs> I guess. What? Whatever. Like, what's, hello. Can we? We just started off on like. <laughs> I don't like that for us. Like, let's start over. Like, a lot, a Naya love note, everybody. Like, how you feeling? Like, what's going on? Like, I am naturally like this. I don't know. I get it from my mama. It's okay. You were talking about your outfit. Um, you get it, share where you get it from, or because you were saying that somebody. Um, yeah, I got it from Spiritual Boutique. I gotta look back on my Instagram, but did they hit you up? It's definitely you spiritual. So, so, so what happened was. I've been going into this store, like, literally taking things off the mannequin. Mm. I'd be, like, walking there, and it's so cute. And I'd be like, just give me the whole thing off the damn mannequin. I just want those. So this outfit was actually the entire mannequin. Oh, wow. I just added the purse and the shoes. So, and then after that, I just wore them so much that, like, we started talking about, like, sponsorships and, like, they'd send me clothes and stuff like that. So now I just, like. That's fire. I feel like when I see, because I, I think when I go shopping, sometimes I like what's on a mannequin, but I be scared to get it because I be like, people going to think I'm just, I don't have no style. Like, I just took that out the mannequin. I look, walk around looking like a mannequin and shit. Nah, I mean, all the best outfits be on the mannequins. I be trying to see what they have to offer. If you notice, like, you might see something in the window, but it don't be on display, like, mm. when you go in the store to find it. Because those be the ones that's highest out. And I know this because I used to work in retail. So I know what they put on displays and which one sells faster based on marketing. So you're missing out, honey. It's crazy because I um I the last time I, I went to the mall, I seen this outfit on a mannequin and I I think I asked somebody did they like it and and it was like I'm not getting another other mannequin. And then mm. another time I remember seeing something on a mannequin that I really liked. It was a sweater. Because they didn't have my size, like on the um, matter of fact, it was yesterday. They I, it was a jacket. They didn't have my size on a, on a hanger. I'm like, yo, what size is that? They was like, it's a large. I'm like, well, that's my size. Can I get it? Like, nah, you can't have it out the mannequin. So you must have some type of clout that you could just walk into the store and be like, I want that out the mannequin. And they nah, I feel like um, sometimes this is what happens. Sometimes if it's the very last one, like sometimes they won't take it off the mannequin because depending on the amount of work it takes to take it off the mannequin. Mm. And then other places where you can actually just, like, strip it off, you can take those. They'll be like, yeah, that's the last one. Go ahead and take it off the mannequin. And they'll replace it with something else. But I'm the type of person that walks up to the manager like, hey, you know, can I talk to the manager or something <laughs> like that? Or whoever, you know. And I'll be like, you know what? That is so cute and I really love it. Just give me the whole damn mannequin. And they'll be like, oh, okay. Take so, the whole mannequin down. So since we're talking about shopping, right, what type of shop are you? Are you, like, like looking for deals or, like, you just you see as you want it, you got it? Mm, it just depends. Like, if I got to spend, like, a bunch of money, I'm going to look for a deal. Mm. Like, when I got to pay for, like, my outfit, my dancer's outfits, you know, like, yeah. then I'm like, okay, that's, because I have four dancers. Okay. So, it's like, that's two males, two guys. Men clothes are definitely higher than women clothes. For sure. So, I'm always, on that aspect, I'm looking for a deal to get, like, the whole package done at once. To make things easier. But if I go shopping somewhere and I'm like, oh, I see it and it's like, it's cute. I don't care where it comes from. I'm going to get it. So let's paint this picture, right? You go into the store. They don't have the outfit. The only outfit they, they, that they have is on a mannequin. Do you ask the manager for a discount because that's on a mannequin or no? No. I don't, if I really like it, I'm just going to ask for it and take it off. And I'm asking it. for a discount. I'm going to tell you why. Why? Everybody been touching this shit. Like, it's probably dirty. Like, I don't know who, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm, I'm like, definitely I definitely say discount. mannequins that was in the display. But on top of that, yeah, they touch the material. But it's just like, I go home and wash my clothes anyways. Oh, so you wash it after you buy it? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, I never did. I, don't, I just throw it right on. No. I mean, depends on if I'm, like, in a hurry or some shit like that. Or if it's, like, already a custom outfit, then that's different. But half the time, I definitely make sure to go, especially if I'm buying panties. Okay. If I buy panties you wash from places, oh yes, I oh, wash so those maybe, panties before I put them up on. Maybe I'm the dirty one because I just buy the shit and I just throw that shit on. I like, know some places that have panties out. Okay. And girls just pick them up and they go and they try yeah. them on and oh, don't look good and they take them. But oh no, uh uh. Mm -mm. Wait, and you now can you try know, panties on? I have never tried panties on before. I already know my size. 
So there ain't no point in me trying on that. And quite frankly, I don't like trying on clothes. That's one thing about shopping I don't like. I don't like trying on shit. So I, I, it's, it's a lot. I don't mind trying on stuff, but I don't know if this is just me. I, like hypothetically, right? If I try on a shirt, mm. I need to get the same size but a different shirt because I don't want to stretch it out. Like that's just me. It's weird. Like if I try on a shirt and it fits and if it's a, it's a large, I'm like, okay, I need the, another large because I don't want to buy the one I just tried try on. Is that just me? You do that? Uh, you don't do that? No, no, no. You don't do that? That's me for sure. Sounds like it's definitely you. But we're gonna keep that in a little box okay. because you know, who I'm needs to know that you know. This is what we're gonna do. Like <laughs> everything that we say in this interview that you can judge me for, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna put it in a box, right? Put it in a box. We're gonna put, matter of fact, we're not gonna put it in a box. We're gonna put it in a piece of aluminum for you. Because you know what balls up tight. We're gonna ball it up. And at the end of the interview, we're just going to throw it away like it never happened, all right? Aluminum foil. Yeah, because aluminum foil balls up really tight. And let me tell you what else it does. It gets thrown in the trash can, and then it's some land somewhere in the sewer oh for some God. animal to swallow up and then gobble down and then die, and then they fish that animal out and then feed it to you. I don't think I want to do aluminum foil. Are you serious right now? I think we should get a box, and then we should take that box and place it somewhere of a reminder that you know what this box is. Uh, so you like to recycle? No. <laughs> <laughs> what type of shit is you on right now? What type of shit is you on right now? You gonna look I don't me in my like eye. to recycle, but I don't. I don't throw away aluminum foil. I don't even lo- use aluminum foil. So you like paper straws? When it comes to like tying stuff, um, like when I cover no. up my my food, I use the plastic wrap. No, this is a different. Qu- I'm saying, do you like paper straws? Like paper but, straws? Yeah. No, I hate those Shit, things, but the, I use them anyways. I hate them. Fucking keep getting in your fucking mouth. But when you said aluminum foil, it gets soggy too. It get you said it get into the ocean and fucking. But a lot fish. of things do that. You know what I'm saying? That's I what just, I'm saying. So pick a side. I'm just saying, just watch where you throw it away at. Can't just like throw it and it gets on the ground and then sweep it up. Some people don't I'm care. With you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm just saying, if you're going to be on that side of you the You know what it is? It's my brother. My brother Keem. It's all his fault. It's all his fault. Okay. He's been sending me um, stuff of animals, like what restaurants be doing to the animals and stuff. And stuff. he keeps sending those to me in my DM. And I had to tell him, like, stop sending this shit to me. Like, you're making me turn into a yeah. fucking vegetarian. It's like weird. I love animals. I really do. Me too. Now he's starting to make me care for them like even more in ways that I've never really cared for animals to begin with. And I think it's because my puppy London. Like London makes me want to care for I mean, But we're not animals. eating dogs though. Fuck no. Right. So and anybody that is needs their butt wood. If you had a pet chicken, maybe Excuse I Excuse me, let me rephrase. Needs their ass wood. <laughs> if there you had that. a pet chicken, maybe I'll understand, but Hell no, because if that's my pet little chicken, chicken, then you probably I shouldn't, wouldn't eat chicken. You shouldn't eat it if it's my pet. Yeah, I, I eat chicken. So. If if my little chicken, chicken is walking around here, mine is business and its own comforts of its own home. Okay, I wouldn't eat your chicken. I'm just saying chicken in general. Okay, but don't be looking at my chicken. Oh my god, I don't like whatever. So <laughs> you you used to live in Atlanta. Yes. Um, you moved to LA. Mm-hmm. What? Where are you from originally? You sound a little country. <gasps> Ooh, rude. Um, that's I'm, rude. I'm from Texas. Right. That's not rude. That's right on par. No, you be like you sound like What country. part of Texas? Austin. Austin. Maynard. Elgin. How? How was? I heard Austin was really dope. Isn't that the capital of Texas? Mm-hmm. Duh. That's not a <laughs> duh. That's not a duh. You right. You know what? Because a lot of people don't know that. Right. A lot so of people. Are, I thought it was Houston. You could have kept that part to yourself too. So listen, a part of them that we balling up in our <laughs> box. You put that in a box. Yeah, Go ahead, we're add put that, that in a to box. the box. But yeah, anyway, so how was Houston? I thought I heard it was really dope. Houston or Austin? Austin. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Austin. Um, I like Austin. She can't even turn up. You want something? Come on. You know what it is? It's like where you are from. Sometimes, like how's how? I think it's like I'm gonna be real with you. I'm an honest person. I'm very honest. Mm-hmm. I love everybody. I do. But you ever have a city, I think most, some people have this, where it's like, yeah, you might be from that city, but you don't really rock with your city like that. I have a, I have some parts of my city that I just do not care for. When you, when people ask me, like, so you have how's a love, Austin? Hate relationship with- yeah, I have like a, like, hey, depending on what area that you go in, it's just like, yeah. Now, 6th Street, 
Mm. We had some good times on that What's thing. Sixth Street? Is that like a strip? Like, you know what the hell 6th Street is. I don't. I've oh, my God. For the audience, people that don't know what 6th Street is, it's never been to Austin, Texas. It's a strip that has nothing but clubs on there. Okay. During South by Southwest, they transfer some of those clubs into stages for the audience to perform in gold because I am winning. And <laughs> now, like, <laughs> Yo, she is a trip, bro. Like, <laughs> we going to have to get through this interview because she is... A trip to Austin, all the way to Austin. But no, but I love my city, and I think the best thing about Austin that I've always promoted and I love so much is that the our saying is keep Austin weird. And to me, mm-hmm. it's like be yourself. When you go to Austin, people are not judging you. They're very kind. They're very, you know, we got big Southern hospitality in, in Texas, no matter where it's Dallas, Houston, whatever. So Southern hospitality is really big and out there. Being polite and out in LA, that makes you weird. Facts. So it's fact. crazy because first of all, I can understand why you thought I why you thought I knew what Sixth Street was, but I never been to South by Southwest. Really? You never, never been to South by? Never been to South by Southwest. Shout out to Bel Air. Shout out to Bel Air. Um, and I am going to enjoy this also with a friend in the building. If we have another cup. Ah, I don't have another cup. But what? But. <gasps> You got my cup. No. And I'll take the bottle. You can get a cup. It should be a cup out there. If you go out there to your right, it's a cup. Yeah, you get a cup. We gotta share. Yeah, we sharing is caring. Look at you. (laughs) So um, I knew it. You moved to you moved to Atlanta. Mm Mm-hmm. First and foremost. You know Atlanta oh shit, damn. Um He can wait. Here you can have mine. Here here, you can have mine. Nah, bro, it's good. It's getting sharing and caring. It's all love here. If you can just make sure mine, my, uh, if, again, if you don't mind, please. Since, no, nah, you, no, 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 you gotta drink that. Uh, uh-uh, uh, it's a dub. Gotta, oh my gosh. Yeah, you, you gotta drink that. Um, so, you moved to Atlanta. First of all, why did you move to Atlanta from Austin? Um, I was actually going to move to LA first, mm-hmm. and then I just got this, you know, opportunity to come out here. What opportunity? Wasn't like. That's all another story. No, talk to, no, 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 no. It is all another is story. for a reason. So what was the opportunity? Um, the opportunity was to be uh this rapper's PR. And Interesting. That's not what it was at all. So yeah, my first So before we fast forward, don't I hate when people try to skip through the, the story. No. So you were doing PR before you was an artist. No. Okay. Exactly. So somebody just was like, hey, I want you to be my PR? Yep. I don't, explain. Can you elaborate? I don't understand. I met him uh, at South him? by Southwest. I'm not going to say no names. Why that not? Because that is old, and I don't relive the old. And you keep asking me questions, but it's only why you get in the old. Because I'm trying to focus on the new, but you keep me bringing back to the old. Yeah, because it's an interview. I got to ask questions. Okay, look. I ain't selling no names. I, I don't do no okay. names. I don't okay. do name drops. Okay, cool. He actually be a my PR. Be- my business. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um. He asked me to be his PR. I didn't even drink the first part. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, Let me drink this part first. Uh, then you really going to start getting the truth. You best. I was going to pour you some more and pour him some more so I can start drinking, but. You right. I ain't want to, you know what I'm saying? Come on, let me be. You could go ahead and start drinking. No, no, no. You're going to have to take some more. Come on. So tell me about it. He, he asked you to be his PR. I'm listening. Mm. I don't really drink like that, so. You know. You know. I can only do the champagne bottles and, you know, and, and whatnot. He asked you to be his PR. Come on. He asked me to be his PR because he is nosy. Okay. And um, you know, come to find out, he was trying to pimp me. He was trying to, wait, that took a crazy turn. Exactly. That's why I said it's another story. So how was he, tr- wait, wait, how was he trying to pimp me? Like. What, so, made, what, give off the, what gave him the idea that he, you could even be pimp? And I how? don't know. Are we talking sexually this or are we talking business? Me. This is new to me. So, okay, look. So when I met him, we talked about marketing, and I told him, you know, how I was really good with, like, doing something because that's what I, I, I'm in good with that. I don't want to help him. That wasn't the deal, but I was an artist. At the time, I had not, I had not put out no music. I have not... You hadn't put out any music. 
I there got we go. you. I'm following you. Um, at the time. So this was like what, 2014, 15, maybe. And then um he was like, You can come move out here, stay with me. I got an extra bedroom, blah, blah, blah. You can rest my PR, that's how you make money, blah, okay. blah, blah. And then we can, you know, I can help you on the music side. And I was like, Sound like oh, a dope okay, opportunity. Cool, you know, dope opportunity, blah, blah, blah. I never have been outside uh, Austin at that time. Okay. Never been outside of Austin. And I was like, this is new for me. So then when I got there, it was the complete fucking opposite. Like he has some shorty named Barbie, some white girl named Barbie staying there. His cousin staying there who turned out to be like a brother to me still to this day. Mm-hmm. He was there, and then all of a sudden we had to pack up and go to Miami. Then we went to Miami for him to sign a deal, and then he was like, oh, they're moving to Miami. We're staying in Atlanta to take over his lease. It was like all kind of shit, and I was like, what the hell? I really got a glimpse of, like, what the hell it was. This man wanted me to pay his rent, and I was like, sir, that was not in the conversation, in the contract, or anything that we discussed or had previous conversations of. So... I ended up getting a job at Wet Willie's as a waitress. Mm. And at the time frame that I had got the job and the time frame that he wanted me to pay his rent with his cousin didn't match up. So I was like, well, you're going to have to, you know, pay it. He was like, "Um, yeah, but if I pay it, then you're going to have to owe me. I was like, how the hell am I going to owe you for paying your own bills? That don't even make sense to me. I didn't even know that I was supposed to be here. So <laughs> what's the situation? So the fact that you're asking me to pay your bills. So you can go up and sign a deal in Miami is ridiculous to me. So then next thing you know, I, my phone is like ringing off the hook. One good day. I mean, that thing just ringing, 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 ringing. And it's a bunch of men. And I was like, why is all these men asking me, talking about they saw my ad? And I was like, what ad are you talking about? And they was like, yeah, we saw your ad. I was like, what are you talking about, sir? I don't have an ad. I don't sell anything. He was like, and then he just hangs up. So I'm in the Uber, and I'm, like, talking to my homegirl, and I'm trying to explain to her what's going on because I'm freaking out, trying to figure out why these men keep calling my phone. My Uber driver is like, you're on backstage. And I was like, what? Oh, wow. Backstage or back page, was it? Back, back. Page. Okay, back page. I remember that. I remember that. As I was describing it, I guess he knows what it is. Yeah. And he's like, in my mind, I was like, how do you know what back page is? But I didn't ask that because I was just trying to get more information. It used to be popular back in the day. So it, apparently, I go on back page and I type my name in. And to my shock, this man and this girl came together. Excuse me. They came together had mad pictures of me on there with the address where I'm living at and my phone number on there. And they had, like, this caption. And I knew that she had made it because it was typed out as a woman would type it with a certain emoji she mm. was using. So in my mind at that time, I was like, oh, I got to beat her ass. I got to beat her ass. Like, when I see her, I'm going to beat her ass. It's not even, like, a question. I don't give a damn what time or place or where I am in my life. Still to this day, if I saw her, you gonna be the ass. I would beat her ass. <laughs> we don't need that, man. It would be on site. I do not care. You're Let me tell you why. Doing too well off now. No, no, it don't matter. Let me tell you why. <laughs> it don't matter. Certain things in my life, I done prayed, repent, let go. Mm. Right. And nine seven out of ten, I have talked to that woman directly, and we've talked it out, squashed it, moved on. I haven't talked to that bitch yet. That's mm. one. Two, I was there defending her, you know, being on her side, being a friend to her, like giving you loyalty, giving you advice, helping you when you told me you want to go to school. Let me help you get into school. Like to be a real genuine friend to somebody and then have them do that because a man told you so and you didn't have no backbone to say this ain't right or nah, that's not cool, or nothing like that. Like, that's crazy to me. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see how. And then you put my address where I'm living. I'm new to Atlanta. I don't, I'm literally, I was only in Atlanta for maybe, like, not even a week. Wow. 
So anything could have happened to me. I'm away from my family. I don't know nobody out here. Y'all got mad pictures of me on there. Y'all got my number on there. Y'all got the address that I'm staying on there. And it's like you could have put me in danger, my life in danger. Anything could have happened to me. And because you chose to ride some damn dick and you didn't have your own backbone to not to tell this man, yo, that's not cool. Or I don't want to be a part of it. Yes, you need your ass whooped. Okay, so we got through that story, right? So now you in Atlanta. Um, you said you were doing music in Austin before you came to Atlanta. You just decided to do PR for this certain artist, mm -hmm. right? Um, I guess at when did it start picking up your music and you started getting uh, buzz or notarized? I found other ways to get myself out here mm -hmm. in Atlanta. I joined promo teams. Okay, so that's uh, I, I've heard about that a few times. Like that's like a big thing in Atlanta. Um, at the time when I was here, it was a big thing. I don't know if they still doing it or not. I believe that they are because they still do the parties. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't think everybody still does it though. But yeah. So what made at what what at what point did you move to LA from Atlanta then? The end of 2018, going into 2019. And what made you do that? I was um, offered a part to rec um, do a movie with Master P. Oh, what movie was that? I can't say the name of it because I don't know if they're still going to do something with it or not. But at that time before COVID, I got sent the script. I was told, you know, what part I was going to, what they were going to play. Came in and did a reading for him. And then, you know, we had just been like waiting for, you know, everybody to, I guess, figure it out. Because he was putting out, I got the hookup too mm -hmm. at that time. Okay. So he was doing that in the process. So we had to wait till that one was done. And then he was doing another movie. And then it was the movie we were going to do. Um, but then by that time, COVID had hit, and there went the. Did movie. you um, was, did you get a chance to like work with him closely when you were, when y'all was doing a set or? Oh no, it never even got started. Oh it, wow! It didn't even get to that point because COVID had hit at the time and everything shut down. So how was that? Because you moved and like I'm, I'm assuming you moved thinking you about to uh, get this great opportunity to be in this movie. Master P is um, working with Master P or him working on a movie, and then COVID hit. Like how did you even? How was you able to manage that? Well, at the time, I was still I was in a relationship, so I was also um, dating somebody at the time, and we was living together. Okay, okay. so I had a, a living, and we had been together for at that point about almost five years. Okay, no, almost three years at that time. So this wasn't like one of the rappers you were talking about. Or, no, because you saying you dated a lot of rappers. Mm -hmm. Who's the biggest rapper you dated? Why you can't ask me no questions like that? This is my shit. Why can't I? No, you can, but I ain't answering it. Oh my god, you can't. All right, so who I who I sleep lay down with is my business. Who said you sleep with business. them? If they my man, then I'm sleeping with them. What you talking about? I mean, dating and being your man. If we if we dating, that's considered sex in my book. There's sex going on in our dating life, especially mm. if it's months or going on years of knowing each other. You damn right. I'm on that thing. So I was doing some research, right? Mm -hmm. And at first, I really couldn't find too much. Mm -hmm. And but I did see one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you was dating Sue Surf, or was that not a? Was that like a? Was that like fake? No. Defined. No, we was not dating. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, it was clearly something y'all was going back and forth on the internet. Like, what the? Like, what, I'm, I'm just. It was I'm some curious. real toxic shit. So that was a real thing. Here's the thing. Me and Surf have like this love and hate relationship, and it's like I can't stand that nigga. I can't stand that my worst goddamn shit, right? And, and you know he could say the same things to me. Um, but we never went that route. Like it was, it was always, I think, more flirting mm. and and potential of seeing where things could go. But we just always clashed, so it just never went where it went. You know, we've had our share of like conversations of why it never got to that point. But then the day, everybody not meant to rock like that, and then that's okay. You know, some people just meant to stay friends and. I rather that than nothing else. Do you ever sit back and um and think like wonder like what if I guess no no never nope did did you ever think that he not would... not nah just no not really 
Oh, I mean, cause I, I used to be a a, a huge uh, battle rap fan. So like, um, when I, I didn't I, even know he. <laughs> I didn't even know surf battle raps. When me and him met, I did not know that. Like I, I had never seen none of his videos. I've never heard none of his music. Like I didn't know nothing in his career path of what he did. Mm. I just knew like he was a lit nigga on Clubhouse. Okay, okay, yeah, he was. That that whole Clubhouse way was 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 dope. Like at one point, you still do you still do Clubhouse? Um, I pop in there every like few months. But nah, but when I do come in there, it's definitely always love. And that's what I can appreciate is crazy because people be knowing what the hell be going on in my life. And when I get on Clubhouse, they be like, so Vanaya, what happened to And I be like, what the hell? How y'all pays attention? Like so that. how was, did you, was you one of the people? Because I feel like some people got on Clubhouse and they really blew up from that shit. Like I, I know a few people that really was like. Nah, I was already popping before Clubhouse. Oh, excuse and me. And I wasn't on Clubhouse long enough to even. Um, to get popping in that way, mm. like I don't really care. So you did this this interview recently, right? And it was interesting because I was like, okay, but you're oh talking my god, about, you're talking about guys. You're talking about uh, <sighs> what you expect out of guys and things like that, right? I know what interview you're talking about. Yeah, we're talking about I'm DJ Smalls. I, I, I know, don't care. I don't it's know. fine. Um, you had some requirements, like for somebody that you got to date. What was the requirements again? Um, the requirements is, you know, open doors, be a gentleman. Mm -hmm. I like when they, you know, walk on the right side of the street when we out and about. Mm -hmm. Shows protection, you know, got manners. And, you know, I think that I, you know, now nah, I think. I definitely want a man that can take care of himself, mm -hmm. his family. You know, like, I don't feel like it's a... Why should I be labeled as a woman that just wants a man for his money when I feel like a real man is going to want to make his own money to be able to take care of himself, his family? You know, and I say family. I didn't never say you, your girl, you know, because I feel like to make it a something where I'm where I'm trying to say that it's a I wouldn't say requirement, but it's just like I know men that would be like, yo, I'm not looking for a relationship because I'm really trying to focus on my money, I'm trying to focus on my bag. I'm trying to make sure that one day I can take care of my kids if I need to, da, da, da. Respect that. I love that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I say that's what I'm not going to praise a man for, that means you're not going to sit here and call me a gold digger or a bitch that only like men for money or that's all us ladies want these days. When if, I re if my preference is a man who can take care of himself and his family, then that's my preference. Just like men have a preference of women that they are more attracted to or would prefer to date, I have a preference. I'm not just going after his pockets, though, which is why I list the many other requirements that I look for. I mean, I don't think either way, if you want a nigga, a guy, a man with money, it's okay. I mean, that's your purpose, right? Like, I might not care for it, but it is what it is. I'm not here to judge you for it. What I was going to ask you is, what do you think you bring to the table for a man that, that for the man that you require this from? I feel like every time I've um, had this question, I've always just asked them, "What could I bring that they didn't have?" Mm. You know, well, what do you, but what I, do you but I, have? I guess, like, what what would you say that your attributes are if you had? I to? feel like I can bring a man peace and a headache at the same time, <laughs> cause I'm fun and it's always gonna be an adventure with me. You know, I'm like a little sour patch kid. Sometimes I'm mad, but then I'm sweet. And when I'm sweet, you already know what that means. So what does it mean? That's mind your business. What the fuck? Um, <laughs> I never get so many mind your business in one interview. Like that's what an interview is to be in your business. Like, like that's the whole point of the interview. Certain questions. Look, um, it means is going down in the bedrooms. In in like they it go down in the club something like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, oh, in the club. So you like it in the club? What I, I said, said how Young Jack was saying it's going down in the club is <laughs> where it's going down in the in the bedroom. Okay. Um, but I think what I want to be, I want to be something. No, someone that a man grows with. Mm. I don't want to be something he's already had, something that he's used to. I want to be something new. So let me ask you this: if, if if it was a man, right, that couldn't take care of his family, and he just wanted the same thing you want, I just want to be a man that a woman can grow with. Would that be okay with you? It would be because he has goals, mm. he has dreams, he has ambitions, he has something that he really wants out of life. 
besides what he has now. Mm. And when I say I can't date no man from Walmart, McDonald's, blah, 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 I'm not saying like it's because of where you work at. I'm saying if you're content with just working at Walmart and that's all this is for you, no, I can't date you. If mm. this is all you see yourself doing, sitting on the couch, blowing money, you ain't doing shit with your life. You have no goals. You have no dreams. You have nothing that wants, nothing out of life. You know, so a lot of, most people that I surround myself with want something out of life, not for them, but for someone else. Mm. And so any man that I meet that has dreams, not seven out of 10, those dreams don't, he's not doing it for him. He's doing it for his future or whatever he's working with right now. So you could date a guy that work at McDonald's as long as that's not his end goal. Hell no. Sorry about you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why not? You just, you just gave me you. all this game. We could be friends. But, but you just, I, you you know just gave saying? me all this game about a man wanting because to do for it me, for somebody else. My preference is not that. I not. I did but what not does say, McDonald's got to do with with the guy? He could be a guy that's a protector. It provider. depends on where your age is. For me, I'm gonna be real with you. If you like 19, 20 type shit, I'm my first of all. I'm not dating no 19, 20 year olds. Whatever guy that's, I'm not doing it. That's right? your age. That automatic eliminates it. Right. But if I was around that age, then it would be understanding to me because you're 19, Wait, 20. About that. Right. A guy around your now, age right it, now. No, uh, any man around my age working at McDonald's, sir. I have so many questions. Okay. Wow. What's and the a questions? lot of questions come from where did it go wrong and why didn't you pick yourself where up? Where did it go wrong? Anyway. Okay, I'm not. I gotta pick myself up every day and keep working hard for my dreams and my goals to get where I'm going. Then it doesn't matter what it is that I feel like I had to do to pick myself up. I picked myself up. I'm not doing that. So you're my age, you didn't pick yourself up. What? So you're telling me because a guy works at McDonald's, that's not him picking himself up? What if he was? What if it was? Lo, what if it was for lower me, than that? For me, now if something happens to where you know he fell, life happens. I'm gonna be there to support him because it's all about a conversation. But you're not going in it dating no, somebody. No, I'm not going in like, oh yeah, you see the McDonald's counter guy? Mm -hmm, take that's my number up. down. No, I'm up. not doing that. I'm not gonna do that. But it, let me have meet this guy and I really like him. And he had all the qualities that I was wanting in a man. And I found out he worked at McDonald's. I don't care. Right, that's different. Okay, okay, cool. That's so we different. said the same thing. I want, I want that man He's not man going to McDonald's trying to find yeah, somebody. Yeah, like I'm not, if I go to McDonald's and a man holler at me through the window, no. Leave okay. me alone. Give me my food and it better be hot. <laughs> <laughs> and you better not have forgot nothing either. <laughs> like, Yo, question. So, so you say you're a Sour Patch Kid. Well, you can be a Sour Patch Kid, mm -hmm. right? We always are here on these platforms about how a man should treat a woman, how a woman should treat a man. I'm curious to know from you, and I love know, how do you think, not even how a woman should treat a man, but how should we even interact with each other, right? Like, honestly, like, how if you had a man, how do you treat your man? Like, or, or, or how would you want him to treat you? It was a lot of questions in one. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very multitasking type of person. Um, When I'm in a relationship, my man is my man. I think as I've grown into the woman that I am, I've learned how to treat a man. Mm, yeah. I didn't start off knowing how to because how I that, didn't though? even know how to love myself. How do how do you treat a man? How I treat my man now? Yeah, mm. I thought you, you were, said you were single. Right? I don't know. I am. I okay. am single. How would but you I'm treat saying, your man? Like, how yeah, I would yeah, yeah. how I would treat my man is I want to treat my man like you know he a king. I want to make sure that when he come home, I rub his feet for him. Rub his back for him, you know, give him a little head massage, whatever. And by head massage, I do me head massage. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, but at the same time, that man know who he coming home to. Mm. I'm not no no weak ass female. What do you, you mean by weak? If I'm doing all those things to treat you like that, then you better have earned to be treated that way. Mm. That means by respecting me, by giving me the same thing that you asked for me in return. Reciprocation. You, you, yeah, you know, if you want me to be loyal, then you be loyal. You want me to be honest, then you be honest. Don't come in the house and ask something from me that you're not going to give me. Mm. Because then when I give you the same energy you giving me, you're going to feel some type of way. But it's like the type of bitch that I am, I'm a Capricorn. Can't no nigga get nothing past me. Mm. I'm always going to know. I like that. So let's go to this. We were talking about, um, well, you were talking about where you at right now, right? And you're not like, well, I ain't really looking for nothing. You know, sneaky link. Just do our thing and just get the fuck. You feel me? Like, that's it's not serious. I want to ask you. So if if a guy, let's paint this bitch, had a let me drink for this one. Had a girlfriend, right? And he like, man, I I'm honest with you, and 
he wanted you to be the sneaky link. Would you be down for it? No. Why not? I don't do girlfriends. Okay, but you said that if somebody was straight up with you, honest, or yeah, less, I girlfriend. also said I also said I will not deal with you in that way. Okay, okay. I said so that no in the interview. I made it clear. I respect that you're honest with me, but I will not deal, deal with, with you, you in, that, in way. that way. And I said those words verbatim in that damn DJ Smalls interview. So when you say a sneaky link, what is a sneaky link? A sneaky link is two single ass people who, when they in the same city, you know what I'm saying, they know what time it is. And my business is my business, and your business is your business. And oh, what man. we do is our business. Hence the word sneaky. I'm not trying to be out here dealing with somebody who's dealing with everybody and their mama. I, I guess, because when I think of Sneaky Link, I think of, like, Sneaky. What you just is, is described to me sounds like two grown-ups doing what they want to do because nah, they can. because at the end of the day, the way a Sneaky Link works is the passion of not being able to see each other any time at any given moment. So you have to do what you got to do when you with that person wherever you at. I still don't see that as... makes it more spontaneous. I don't see that as Sneaky because that, mean, can you, be your, that can be your agreement. Nah, because he got his other shorties, I got my other niggas, okay. and we've had that conversation. Okay. You do what you do, I do what I do. I know about his other bitches. Okay. When we in the same room as his other bitches, the reason why I'm a sneaky link is because these bitches don't know that I'm fucking the same nigga they fucking. Okay, just not a girlfriend. No. Okay, it makes sense. If I you are it. in a relationship, I don't condone in that because, first of all, I don't want that karma. And I've heard how you get them is how you lose them. That's a fact. I'm not doing that. I was not raised that way. If you have a woman, then that is your woman. You come over to a night of love note, I'm going to be the woman to tell you about yourself. Mm. I have done that. I've told men, like, you should be ashamed of yourself. Don't you got a girlfriend? Like, I would really I feel bad for her to deal with a man like you. <laughs> and you know what? It makes them sit there and be, you you, you like my, uh, uh-uh. I shouldn't have to tell you how to be a man to your woman. Now, you got some bitches that don't care. But the way I see it, I don't care if I fuck with you, I don't fuck with you, I know you, or I don't know you. If I am aware that that is your man and you are in a relationship with this man, Regardless of whatever beef or, or whatever, I may know you, don't know, whatever. That's off limits. I like that. That's, that's, that's commendable and respectable. Let's get to this music some more, Ooh. right? Um, you just dropped, did you just drop the single? I did. What's the name of the single? It's called He Say. He Say. Um, first of all, before, shit, so much shit. Like, I feel like when I, when I hear, when I see you, it's always something going on. Like, <laughs> you, uh, the music video. <laughs> Like you, the the footage is lost. Um, shit. Jesus. The uh, even you supposed to have like a a, a single release party or something. Oh, hallelujah! Down here, mm, praise the Lord. And no, like what's going on? Like you have management? Like what's... Uh, okay, so the video got messed up purposely, and it came from somebody who was really close to me, which was shocking to me. This man knew when my video release party was. He knew the song had been done for a minute. I shot the video damn near a month ago. He told me, oh, I'm going to have it done, you know, in a week. Mind you, he's been my videographer for, like, months. So it's like, you know, I'm not really, like, expecting him to do anything. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. my guy. I say, well, you know, I'm trying to meet first quarter, and my release party video is on the 30th. He said, I got you. It's going to take me a week, da, da, da. Okay. Well, a week go by, and I'm tapping. I'm just like, hey, by the way, I just want to let you know these are some of the ideas I was thinking for the edits. He said, well, you want to link up and, you know, sit down and edit. Da, da, da. I was like, bet. So we linked up, and we sat down in my bedroom, edit this video. I went through every scene he shot, and we even added effects, things that I saw that I didn't like. I was like, nah, we got to cover that up or don't use that at all. Use this effect to go in it. The video was damn near done in one day. All he had to do was just clean it up. I don't know where the high horse came into play or whatever the case may be. But after that, it was we were supposed to link up again to finish it. He didn't have enough time to do that before I had to go out of town. So I was like, okay, well, don't forget, you know, the the lease is on the 30th. I sent him the flyer of it. Like, this man had everything. We get on the phone, and it's like two weeks before. No, it's like a, a week before the inter the re uh, release party. 
And it's before I got to Atlanta. No, Miami. Before I get to Miami. Nah, before I get to Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta. I'm in the, I'm in a car and get him on the phone. And I'm like, you know, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm going to have it. And so I don't have to cancel it. Because you just, you're not sending it to me. I have nothing to promote it. I can't promote the video release party because I don't even have the video. You know what I'm saying? I can't upload it to YouTube to make it in time. I can't do any of the marketing things that I need to do for this video because I don't have it. I don't even have a promo video to use at all. So I had to take stuff from the shoot, the, the pictures that the photographers had did. And so he's like, I'm going to send it. I'm going to send it. It's going to be out. It's going to be out. you going to have it in time. And I'm like... But am I, though? You know what I'm saying? Because my anxiety and everything is telling me, like, something's going to go bad, and I just know it, and I'm always right. I've never been wrong. I knew something was going to go wrong. I knew that, so I wasn't really as shocking as I was. This man didn't send me my video to the day before my video release party. Mm. I looked at it, which was also the day that he was going out of town. I looked at the video, and all I could do was cry. I just broke down crying. Everything that I sat down with him and did, was not there mm. all the scenes that i said i didn't want in there he put in there in the conversation before this happened we got into a heated conversation and he says to me it doesn't matter when you drop your video as long as you drop it it doesn't matter when it drop it. it's not the end of the world it don't matter if you meet first quarter or second quarter and i'm like but it do matter how's a videographer going to tell an artist it don't matter when they drop the video i'm gonna get the footage whenever i get it then he says, or I could just delete it all together and send your money back and you can find somebody else to reshoot it. This is a week before my video release party. Coming from somebody that I put in position to make the money and do the opportunities the, that he's doing, I put him in position for that thing. And this even came out of his mouth. Because of you, I'm da da da. And it's like, in the end of the day, you had everything you needed for that video to be successful. And you purposely chose not to do it. Mm. And it hurts because you watched how much work I put into this. You knew what it took for me to get that video done so in the first place. And you didn't care. And I don't know where the miscommunication or the mis energy is because we've never had this type of energy before. So it was new to me. Even on set, it was a little weird. But out on the phone, He's like, I'm not on your time and whatnot, and I'm going to get it to you when I get it to you. I'm like, you know, first of all, you're not going to talk to me that way. Second of all, you're not going to disrespect me. If I pay for something and I ask you, are you going to be able to deliver it at this point in time, and you tell me yes, and then you can't do it, then that's something that you communicate. I say, well, you need to communicate. He's like, I don't have to communicate with you. Who does not have to communicate? Like, this argument doesn't even make sense. Yeah. How are you going to tell somebody who you shot their video for, that they paid for, that they're asking you, this is my release party. You knew a month in advance, and you didn't send me my video to the day before that release party? You got it. You cannot tell me that that was not purposely and in intentional. So let me let me ask you this question: Being a woman in the industry, right? Do you feel like a lot of men uh, kind of treat you how they want to treat you because they feel like they can because they're men? Yes, I get that. I've even had, you know, I've even had somebody tell me they didn't like. I asked them one time, and I was like, you know, does it bother you that I'm not fucking you? And he was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why? He's like, because I don't like being rejected. And you know, and it's like, but but what what about what about me feels like it belongs to you? Mm. That you get to dangle this shit over my head, and you get to dangle my name because all it takes is one man that's in charge that got that much power to speak dirt on this woman's name, and bam, everything is gone for her. And although that may not be true, what he said. It's still the fact that a man had that much power to take something that I worked so hard for away from me. And in this case, it was just that. So he wouldn't even send me my footage. It took me to call my brother, and I'm crying on my And I said, you know what? It's going to take a man to get my footage from this man because apparently he needs a little fear put into his heart for him to know, like, not to play with me. And it took my brother to have to keep calling his phone and be like, yo, I'm here for a nine love knows footage. He had to send it that day. Mm -hmm. So do you think is 
has it been other times where like I don't know men would treated you unfairly because like they probably was interested and you wasn't interested in them? Yes, I get that all the time. I don't even get the same support that I show these men. Like you could show up to their shows, repost their music, comment, always send them positive things. Like I'm the type of artist and woman that like don't matter famous or not of my friends that I consider we cool. I'll DM them and be like, yo, King, just want you to know you're doing great. You know, if nobody hasn't told you lately, you're doing good. Keep going. Keep inspiring. You got this. Sometimes we just need to hear that. No, facts. I think it's, it's definitely unfortunate that, like, you know, we, we, we can't ignore the um, the power that men have in some industries. And I think the music industry is definitely one of those industries. And, like, people just be weird in general, right? So, like, I feel like um, I think... It sounds like you got your head on straight. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to continue to just push forward and uh, be strong in it. I mean, it's definitely like what Mulatto had going on. That's why I definitely mm. related to what she had going on. Cause and for people that don't know, the uh, it was she almost not put a uh, particular artist on that song because he, well, he almost, he was about to take, he was about, he was about to he not clear the single. Yeah, he didn't want to clear the verse. Yeah, because um, he tried to holler at her in the DM and she denied him. Yeah. For people that don't know. And it's like, we shouldn't have to go through that. We work just as hard as y'all do. And to be real with you, I feel like women have to work harder to gain that respect in the industry, let alone from the men around them. And so it's like, damn, why you want to make me work 10 times harder than I already am? Yeah. I mean, it's it just takes, like you said, it takes other men to take up for you guys. We talk yeah. about um protecting. It's not even about protecting black women or nothing like that. It's just about... Standing up for what's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not really about protecting nobody. Like, some people try to put it on that however you want to play it. But I think it's just about standing up for something right. And if you think, and if you know that something is not being right and that's somebody that you care for, you should definitely stand up for it. I think I love that you said that. And I really would, just to say on that, I think we would have so many more, so many more good men if the company that they kept around them Mm. was... Was Hold them accountable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, of course. If you, you. you see your boy disrespecting this woman, don't laugh. Like, I see that all the time. Y'all act on, yeah, fuck that bitch and fuck that. And it's like, bro, all it takes is one of y'all to be like, yo, bro, that wasn't even cool. I think, so, funny that we were talking about the uh, McDonald's thing we told 19-year-olds. I, for me, I can't, I, for me, my experience, I think that's like, some young guy stuff. It is. I, I, like, for me, I don't think, I've never been around a guy that like, mistreated a woman and I not say nothing or seen somebody mistreat a woman and somebody next to them not say nothing. So I've been hearing this narrative about like men not holding their friends accountable, but I just feel like that's some shit you when you're a child. Like You'd be surprised. <clears throat> there are men that are still older than me, past the age that they should be, still playing these same damn games. Mm. It is. Well, speaking of women, uh, who was your favorite like female artist? Monica. Monica? Mm-hmm. Oh, for real? It was Whitney Houston and Monica. It's always been Whitney Houston and Monica since I was seven years old. It is wow. never going to change. Damn. So, is that, would you call, would you say that they're your inspiration as well? Yes. When I, so, you like to dance a lot. Like, you do mm-hmm. a, a lot of, your music is dance music, right? Mm-hmm. Where would Monica fit into that? Um. Well, Monica is, fits into where the type of artist in the type of woman artist I want to be. Okay. Like, back then she was like, well, still to this day, I don't even say, excuse me, let me f- fix myself. Still to this day, she's very graceful, you mm. know. She got her thug swag, but she's still, like, the home girl, you know. Mm. And when she when she sings in her music, I feel like you can feel when she's in love. You can feel when she's happy. You can feel when she's just thinking of you. And I think any real fan that listens to Monica that actually feels the tone of her voice coming from another artist, she and Winnie Houston are the reason why I started singing. Wow, that's dope. I would have never even thought that. Like, I would think, um, so would you say like you're old soul? Yes, I am. I was mm. another my old school music. It's wow. my favorite genre to listen to. What's your favorite Monica song? Um, I got so many. I, I want to say Angel of Mine, but it's it's so many more than that. And um, it's actually Slow Jams with her and Usher. Okay. I think my, I'm such a novice sometimes. I feel like mine is, uh, I don't I don't know if this is the title of the name. It's just one of them days. Yes. That shit is so I fire. love that one. That's so And fire. I also like uh, Before You Walk Out of My Life. 
Mm, fire. I love that. I love that song as well. Damn, mm-hmm. that's hard. What about the new the new uh, the new age woman? Like who who is who are some of your like favorite new school um, musicians? Woman musician. I really like I like Normani. Mm, I heard of I her. hope I'm saying her name right. Normani? No. Normani. I think I always, I always say Normani. Excuse me, Normani. Yeah, I like I've Normani a lot. Um she reminds me of like a Jenna Jackson mixed with Sierra. Mm. I just love that she sings, she dances, she's just she's just badass all the way around. I love me some Lizzo, and uh, in the rap game, I I'm a really big fan of Cardi, I not because Cardi. of just her music, her but story. because her yeah her story, her personality, the way that she loves her husband and his other kids, just like those are her her own. So like, that's a real woman for you. Cause you date a man with kids. Yeah, it just depends on how many you got. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, I, what's look, the cap? I'm my own woman, honey. What, what's the cap? Oh, Lord. I mean, sh- you really pushing it if you got three. Sheesh. For me. But you would, you would accept that? Oh, my God. It, yeah. Okay. I would. It depends on this man. Okay. Honey, because you can't take on everybody's, you know, situations. It, that come with a lot. So it takes... Mm. I commend Cardi because it took a lot for her to get the man that she wanted and the man that she believed Offset could be to, to, to that point. That's what I mean by women see potential in men before they see the potentials themselves. themselves. Question, um, what do you think it's going to take for you to, like, pop, like, that next big pop? Of you? Niggas, you just think? stop trying to just fuck me and support. <laughs> That's what it is. Mm. It's like I could walk in a room. Yeah, my shit is dope. This is them. It's fire. That shit dope. That shit done. But what's up with you? Yep. <laughs> that niggas is so horny. Niggas be crazy. Like, niggas just can't help it. Niggas It'd be wild. here. We gonna do this feature. We gonna... And then sometimes they'll lead a feature down. And after this, what you doing after this? So who was the weirdest artist you worked with that was like that? Don't make me say his name. I'm not gonna say that name. Just give me a song then. Don't say the name. I would say... He was featured on a quality control song. What? Everybody, I ain't gonna say what nothing. quality control? First of all, so many artists on quality control that got so many different features. What's the name of the song? No, I'm not saying it. Oh my God. I gotta keep my business. My eyes. This is how I stay out of drama. Okay. I don't like drama. I stay out of drama. And I'm okay with that. But I'm going to ask. That's my job. Oh, no. I respect that you ask and you're doing your <laughs> job. Don't mean I got to answer. Facts. I like that. Well, let people know um, the name of the single one more time. It's called He Say. You didn't even ask me nothing about it either. Let's you talk just asked the name of it. Let's talk about He Say. You see what I'm saying? What? Talk about everything else but the music. We, talk, we talked about some music a little bit. Yeah. We talked about how you got started, but let's talk about He Say. I like it. Hold me accountable. You I like didn't it. even ask me what I got going on Hold in the music ac- business. What, None of that. What, what do you got going on? Oh, now you ask me. What, what do you got going on? Let oh. me know what, what's going on. Well, since you asked, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> since you asked. Um, me and Too Short, Salma Slim, we about to drop our new song um, in video called That's Nasty. Fire. My song, He Say, actually is one of my favorite, favorite number one songs. And I actually got that stamped before I even decided to put it out. Mm-hmm. And um, it came from a real place. Like, everything that I say in that song, I mean it. Mm. And I meant it at the time, and I still mean it to this day. If you have not heard it, you will not know what the song is about. So I'm not assuming that you're gonna ask me any questions. <laughs> I was gonna ask you. Mm. I was. I didn't. So I listened to. I, so what I was doing is I wanted to know more about you, right? Mm. So I was like looking the way you got out of not listening to it. Okay. For, no, I'm. We can, I mean, I told you I didn't listen to it. I don't oh. have to hide from. It. I'm not scared of that. I'm not scared of oh, you. All these people. people. I told you. I told you I'm not scared of y'all. But I do interviews I with people. You don't do listen to their music. I did because I look at I look at your interviews. Oh, okay. I looked at your interviews. I wanted to get to know you. I can understand that. Who you were. I, I did start the interview. I mean, I did start the music. That's how I know it's an up tempo song. I know that much. It's not a it's not a slow song. I, am I right? Yes, I am right. I guess so. And matter of fact, if you wanna uh since since we're here, if you wanna go there, I don't even have to do nothing else. Oh, listen to your love note. He pulled it up. Right. Before. I don't I didn't even touch but my But didn't phone. listen to it. I, so I started yeah. it. It don't matter. But also, also since we here, look, look at this. Don't 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 play with me. Oh. Music. Oh. What's, what's next? Notes. Oh. What's next? 
Uh, YouTube. Come oh. on. Like, come on. This is research, people. Don't play with me. You know, so does Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? You got, I don't even know what that means. I missed the joke. That, that went over my head. That, that means They'd just like you just went out here and did your research and discoveries and put your little mystery game out. It all comes down to you still didn't listen to the song. I didn't. So, again, what, what are you talking about in this song, he said? Maybe you should listen to it. You could tell me because there's plenty of people that didn't listen to it either. Well, so. then they need to go listen to it. Sell it to me. I'm not gonna why sell you I, something that's already you should have already listened to. I, well, if I, if I'm not who I am, and they don't count, they do count. Some of them don't even know who I am. That's the that's the point. Um, you do. So no, what's your that's excuse? the point. No, you're right. We already talked about it. I apologize for not listening to your song. We're talking about the people that's listening and watching. Okay, you want to put it like that? Yes. The song is about me focused on my bag and just wanting to fuck. Hmm. Okay, I mean, I got that out of the sneaky link thing. You said that mm. in the interview. It's not we're not talking about the music, but that's a part of who you that's are. Where that's where the, the shit truth. came from. That's and now, truth. if you did your research, you would have known that. Where was that at? It's definitely on that interview that he did not fail to realize the post that part, but it's on there. So if I would have, he didn't post it. You didn't ask me questions either. You could have sent me a Q and A. Some people send me Q and A's. Yeah, I would. I probably I wouldn't. Nah, oh, that's, okay. That's, that's, that's not my style. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's where you at right now. Um, you remember when you asked me what was the biggest artist I've ever dated? Mm -hmm. He's the reason for that song. Not want to be taken serious. Mm -mm. Me not dating rappers no more. Me and fuck boys. Me going through what the fuck I went through. Me. What did you go Finding through? myself. So I, that don't, but that, to me that sounds like pain. It sounds like hurt. It did, and then that broke me, and it just reminded me that you know what, I'm about to you know tap back into a few old ways. That that that, that I, I can't. I agree am with that. where I'm at in my life because of him. So I wrote that song, and I thank him because it became one of the best songs I've ever written. Okay, great for him being inspiration. Great for yes, him being. Yes, that's where I'm going with it. Yeah, great for him being a catalyst to the song and it being the greatest song that you ever met. But I'm talking about the place it came from. Just like you can hold me accountable. Let's 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 okay, let's let's take it there. Okay, you want to talk about it? Yeah, let's talk let's about talk it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. It came from guys being able to do whatever the hell y'all want to do, mm -hmm. and we have to just take it. It's okay for you to fuck multiple bitches and just be called a player or whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then let a woman, a woman. Do what y'all do. Now, I don't fuck around with most of them niggas. I, I like one sex partner. But if I choose to be like, call you and say, hey, what you doing? Nothing? Pull up, I want some dick. Mm -hmm. How that gonna make you feel? And if I only always called you for that shit, or the only time that we spoke was about your dick, and rather I was getting it or not, it's gonna make you feel some type of way. At the end of the day, I feel like we should keep it real. If you are not in a re relationship status type of vibe in your life, then don't be giving me relationship energy. Mm. If this is all this is for you, and you just wanna fuck, and, and when I see you, I see you, then give me that type of energy. Tell me what's real. Don't have my heart get involved with it, my emotions get involved with it, you telling me that's not true, and is this just the media, blah, blah, blah. Whatever the case may be, and you turn around and you do some hurtful, disrespectful shit, and it's like when you get caught, now you want to tell the truth. But why you ain't tell the truth in the beginning? That makes sense. I'm not. That makes total sense. What I'm saying is, you said now you're I'm treating y'all like y'all treat me. But that's the part I'm talking about. That's not right. That's I don't think that's the oh, right. Oh, because way. I want to focus on my bag and just fuck. That means it's not right. No, no. Because no, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Oh. That's not what you're saying. That's that what you mean. That is what I'm saying. That's what you mean. That's you're, what I'm saying. That's saying, what I mean. That's exactly where the fuck I'm in. <laughs> okay, so you're in this place. I don't want to. I don't want to be in love. Right, but but you're saying you don't want to be in love because of somebody else. Is because what I'm of trying what to say. somebody else has done to me. And that's what all I'm trying to say is I don't think that's the right place it should come from. If you don't want to be in love and you want to focus on your bag, it should only solely be because that's what you want to focus on. The moment you attach that to somebody else takes away from your happiness and your love. Or for real. the moment that you realize that that very incident was what you needed to be focused on yourself. I'm not and disagreeing I'm with that. I'm saying that at the end of the day, 
I'm not saying, oh, I'm hurt. Fuck all these niggas. That's I'm what saying, it sounds like. What I'm saying is, no, because I never put a, a man down. I said where I'm at in my life is where a man is. And I don't feel like I should be called a hoe or a thought or whatever the case may be because I'm doing the same thing that you're doing. I'm being honest with you. Mm-hmm. You ask me a question, I give you the answer to it. You want to know if I'm talking to other niggas? Yo, you talking to anybody else? Yes, I am. Yo, can you call me when you when I get time? I will. At the end of the day, where I'm at is where you was at. I'm focused on my bag, myself, my family, my work, and to get myself where I'm trying to go. Mm. Right? That means I learned my lesson. Where the lesson that I got out of that situation was where I went wrong, and what I take full responsibility was I put more energy into him than into myself. When he was going to the studio and working, I should have been going to the studio to work. Mm-hmm. Instead of worrying about where he was at and, and when the next time I was going to see him. I fucked that up, right? I respect that. But it took what he had. It was the actions that it, it led to and the disrespect that it led to and the way it was done that made me feel the way I felt. Now, how a man came to me and say, babe, you know, I want you to focus on you right now. I see you a little distracted. This is where I'm at in my life, but I want to see you win. So I, I'm, you know, what I'm saying we gotta take a break. We gotta. It's communication. Why mm-hmm. you can't say that? All I'm saying is I'm okay with letting a man know. Look, I'm not looking for a relationship right now. If I am attracted to you, and if that's where I'm at right now in that given moment, that's just what I want. Then I should be able to just say that without being looked at any kind of way. There's nothing wrong with that. And I don't think grown-ups would ever look at you any type of way for You'd that. You'd be surprised. Right. So, um... I don't, I'd be called for the streets. I mean, if that's what they want to call it, that's what they want to call it. That was the motivation behind he say. hmm If... Did you get... Did you, like, go to therapy for that situation? Because it sounded like it hurt you. It did. It broke me. Did you go to therapy for that? Nope. So you think you still... Would you say you still broken? Nope. You. So how did you heal? I got to tell him how I felt. So closure mm-hmm. was how you. I didn't knew. even know closure was a real thing until I needed it. Yeah, it's definitely a real. Like thing. I, I experienced closure for the very first time in my life. How did that make you feel once you when you was able to tell him how you felt? I felt like once I got done, and after I got off the dick, I looked at him. I was <laughs> like, "So this came after you had sex with him." Yep. Has to get that thing one more time, you know what I'm saying? Let him know what he when I'm walking away. You know what I mean? Sometimes you gotta get a little reminder of what you about to lose, honey. That thing, that thing right now. Anyways, um, excuse me. Um, uh, <laughs> after I did that, I looked at him, and in my mind, I was like, "Bitch, what the fuck was you thinking?" I think after I told him exactly how I felt. The song, all of that. He knows it's about him. Mm-hmm. And it just was like, finally, you know, you have that moment where you, all those thoughts in your head that you was thinking that you should have said to somebody, but you never said. You don't get those many moments. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, those type moments come once in a blue moon. When you actually have the opportunity to tell the person that really hurt you exactly, and he has to sit there and listen. Mm-hmm. There's not, he's on the phone, let me call you back. He has to sit there and listen. So who was the song about? It was about it was he say. I'm saying who was the song about? Who was the the inspiration behind it? I'm not gonna say his name. <laughs> you see, I ain't gonna keep asking, yeah, right? I know. How, how how do people support this and support you if they want to listen to the song? They can go follow me under Anaya Love Note, and the song is out everywhere on all streaming platforms under Anaya Love Note. He say, and I just want to say for one, men and women definitely fuck with this song. I think I, I think it's gonna well, be a because y'all like that song. I'm talking shit and popping my shit and women know that that's what the fuck we really be thinking. I like about. you popping your shit. I, I I was actually going to um instead of sending you a Q and A, so you telling me how to do my job, I was going to tell you come <laughs> and pop some shit because I I'm for it. I like it. Like I like all that shit. Like I fuck with it. I think it people. I think people are just um. They're so like gullible and predictable. That's a real word. Mm-hmm. So like when when somebody comes and they see people popping that shit, people just want to see that because they just ignorant. It is what it is. So I love when people pop that shit. I mean, so. I feel like if you really doing your thing, ain't no room to be popping nothing. I'm what I gotta pop for. You see it? Nah, I just it just a come. It depends. I don't know. I take just, that back. It depends if you letting shit. people know what you got going on versus 
being very arrogant. I don't like arrogant people. Okay, I like both just because like confidence, arrogant is two different things. I just I just like it all. Like if you are arrogant, well, be what arrogant. What you like is what you like. That's Facts. your preference, right? Facts. Ain't nothing shame about your preference, honey. Even though you ain't finished your drink, I gave you and your guests the class. I ain't even getting none. Finish it, yeah, but as you a finish yours. As See? a professional, I can't be getting tipsy on mic because then you really would have got that name. Be careful with that. So, <laughs> you really would have got that name had I finished this cup. Mm, whatever. Shout out to Bel Air. Shout out to Shout Anaya out Love to Bel Air. Shout out to the guests that came. Um, and that's all we got, man. Uh, I appreciate it. Tell what I follow you one more time. I'm going to drink this out of the bottle. You know what I'm saying? Wait. Uh, uh, what? First of all, shout out to him for having me on this show. Thank you for this amazing interview. I had a lot of fun. Mm. Let's just get out the way. You, I'm posting a part where you, you try to put me out there. You are that nigga. Oh, for I real. You. I appreciate yes. that. Thank you. So I definitely co sign. So y'all know. Um, but you can definitely find me under Anaya Love Note. A N A Y A Love Note. And you don't know what you're gonna find, but you're gonna find something, baby. You're gonna find something. We appreciate you for coming. Anaya Love Know, everybody. Mr. J Hill is a rap. Thank you.